Guys, morning, morning, morning. Welcome to Frontline City Church. If you joined after the welcome, great to have you here. It's quite an experience to be back at home and ministering from home. But for COVID, there's always a balance between fear and faith. And the balance is wisdom. The balance is finding that perfect place where you're not saying, hey, I'm submitting to the spirit of COVID, but I'm also not foolishly putting people's lives into danger. So for right now, for this week, we have pulled back and we are ministering from home. Here's our old tree that we mentioned frontline so long ago. We baptized the frontline during the shutdown. And here we are from home ministering to you today. But next week, we will be at church and we are ready for a crazy good service next week. And um, I believe that this time has been a time that God has just given frontline to reset a moment, to just take a moment and look at ourselves and say, where are we going? What are we doing? What's working? What's not working? What needs to change? Because God is in it and God wants more from this time. So just like a computer or your cell phone, if you switch it off, you wipe out all the things that are full of the memories that's slowing it down, maybe apps that are running in the background, anything that's just chowing your battery without actually doing anything. And this is what I believe this week was. I asked God, why do we have to shut down church now again for the second week in a row? Uh, last week it was one thing because it was long weekend and most people was away. But this week I wanted to be in church with you. I wanted to see your faces. I wanted to lay hands upon you. I wanted to minister to you one on one. But God said, just allow me to reset frontline. Just allow me to switch off and let something deep happen. So there where you are at home now, challenge those around you. Tell them, I'm being reset. I'm being reset. I'm allowing God to start something fresh. I'm leaving all the old things behind. And today is a new day for my life. Amen. 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 Today is the day that God's going to deal with every area in our life that's not in line with God's promises. I've realized that most of the people that watch Frontline are people that have given their lives to God. So I'm not ministering to those who want to get saved. I'm ministering to those that have been saved for a while. I'll start with one of the scriptures that has had such an impact on my life for the last 30 odd years. James 5 and verse 13. Are there any believers in your fellowship? I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Are there any believers in your fellowship suffering great hardship and distress? So is there anybody in front line that's in hardship and distress? And I can just imagine if we were in church, there'd be hands going up. But be honest of where you're sitting. If you are in hardship and distress, then James says, encourage them to pray. Why? Because not it doesn't make you feel better. It changes things. It is not a feel good sort of like makes you want to just get through the day. No, prayer is the thing that's going to change it. Then it says, are there happy, cheerful ones among you? So I want to ask Frontline, are there happy, cheerful ones in Frontline? Or are we all sad and down and miserable? If we are cheerful ones, then James says, encourage them to sing out their praises. Encourage them to sing out their praises. So we just had an opportunity to sing out our praises. It didn't go very well in our lounge. <laughs> There's quite a few people here, but we didn't really, weren't really <laughs> cheerful and we weren't really dancing. We didn't go much. How did it go in your lounge? <laughs> Forget about if it's in church or not. How is your praises to God when you are alone with God? Come on, sure. And there, are there any sick among you? Oh, yes, Lord. A whole lot of them have got COVID. A whole lot of them are in serious trouble, God. Then ask the elders of the church to come and pray over the sick. And anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. On Friday night, we had a prayer meeting right through the night. We just pushed in for specifically Ashley and Lee and everybody that's got COVID in front line. But specifically, it was very important for Ashley and Lee. And we've already heard the testimonies about how things have changed. I believe the symptoms are just leaving. This morning, I got even more encouragement that people that had symptoms earlier in this week don't have symptoms anymore. Yes, obviously COVID has a time period and it's coming out. But why is it suddenly all aligning with the prayer day? Because God is doing something. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick and the Lord will raise them up. 
And if they have committed sins, they will be forgiven. Guys, I want to say COVID is not above God. COVID is not above Jesus. And I'm, I'm not saying we must be stupid, but I'm saying we have to understand that COVID is submitted to the word of God and COVID has to bow its knee to Jesus. There is no reason that you can say why South Africa is not yet in its third wave except through miraculous power. God has done something great and powerful in our country already and we have to acknowledge it. Verse 16 of James 5. Confess and acknowledge you have offended one another. Oops. And then pray for one another to be instantly healed. <laughs> We've got to pray for one another. For tremendous power is released through the passionate heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. That's what I saw on Friday night. That's what I saw. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Oh man, are we ready for this place? So we go back to this, the start, verse 13. It says, if you're suffering hardships, pray, because prayer is going to change things. If you're happy and cheerful, then sing. Guys, as a Christian, you've got to be a singer. I have the worst voice that God ever created. But when I'm alone in the car, when I'm in a place where I can worship, I can sing out the fall boards, I can sing with all I have because it's about him, it's not about me. Often people in traffic will think there's this madman in this 4x4 jumping up and down in his seat because God is ministering to him right there in his car. All right. Now I want to read a message from Corinthians, which I believe is talking about the state of frontline. I was in church on Friday night, um, Thursday night and Friday night, and I had this heaviness on me for frontline. And I believe God wants to really speak to us. Now these words are a bit strong, but it's from the message in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1 to 4. But right now, friends, I'm completely frustrated by your unspiritual dealing with each other and with God. You're acting like infants in relation to Christ, capable of nothing more than nursing at the breast. Well then, I'll nurse you since you don't seem capable of anything more. As long as you grab what makes you feel good or makes you look important, are you really much different than a babe at the breast? No. Content only when everything's going your way. When one of you says, I'm on Paul's side, and another says, I'm on Apollo's side, aren't you being totally childish? Guys, Frontline has been around now for 10 years. We have given our all in so many ways as leadership, as worship leading, and so on, but there's got to come a change. We cannot be a church that stays the same. Everything that God does is something that grows. You can go from the Old Testament through the New Testament. God always used words like expansion, multiply, grow, increase, adding to them day by day. That is God's heart. And that's not happening in front line. And it's not God's fault. It is us not stepping up to the place where we should be. Hebrews 5 and verse 11 says the same message. I have a lot more to say about this, but it's hard to get it across to you since you've picked up this bad habit of not listening. <laughs> <laughs> By this time, you ought to be teachers yourselves, yet here I find you need someone to sit down with you and go over the basics on God again, starting from square one. Baby's milk, when you should have been on solid food long ago. Milk is for beginners, inexperienced in God's ways. Solid food is for the mature who have some practice in telling right from wrong. I'm buying a steak for lunch. I don't want milk. Okay, if you want to bring me a cup of milk for lunch, I'm going to be grumpy. I'm not going to be happy. I want some serious steak that I have to chew, that I have to process, that is going to fill me. Milk's not going to fill me anymore. Frontline, we've been sharing similar words for a very long time. And that's mostly come from me. We've said God has made room for us. We have said limitless over and over and over and over again. We have said that you serve a God that can do anything so many times. If you don't have it in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit yet, then you're guilty of not listening. Then you're guilty of not taking it in. It's time that we speak another word 
Not because these words are not valid anymore, but because these foundations are laid in him already. So that goes on in Hebrews 6. So come on, let's leave the preschool finger painting exercises on Christ and get on with the grand work of art. God wants to do more through Frontline than what we are currently doing. Yes. Up to now, we've been on the finger painting stage. We need to go into the master art time. We need to go into a time where it's not just a comfortable little word that tickles our ears that are being preached, but a word that changes us. Let's get up with the grand work of art and grow up in Christ. The basic foundation truths are in place. Turning your back on salvation by self-help and turning in trust towards God. In other words, we know that Jesus has done it all for us and we can't do it ourselves. Uh, the basic truth of salvation, baptismal instructions, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead. We saw that in church happening. Eternal judgment. God helping us. We will stay true to all of that. But there's so much more. Let's get on with it. God is saying that raising the dead is actually finger painting. Come on. He's saying that speaking about baptizing, it's actually finger painting. And he's saying, move on to the place of creating the grand artwork. Frontline, we have to move. We have to change. We have to be progressive. Everything that God touches is progressive. I've already said that. We've preached this word about limitless and about God making room for us for many a year. And now it's time to move on. So let's take a deep, deeper now and establish some further processes. Are you ready for more? If you think you have arrived in your Christianity, if you, I think I have arrived, I'm in deep trouble. If my wife thinks she has arrived, we're in deep trouble. Yeah, if Apostle Nicky thinks he has arrived, everybody under him is in deep trouble. We've got to understand that we are progressively moving towards what God wants of us. So what you were happy with in Christ yesterday cannot be what you are happy with in Christ today. So to show you that the front line is changing, I'm asking the garden and office staff to arrange this week to take down the limitless sign inside of our church. I know it's been quite lovely and it's been part of who Frontline is and it's been our identity for about three years now, but it's coming down this week. Yes. There's something new coming up and I'm hoping that you're going to get excited to hear what is the new word that God is going to speak in this time. I haven't finally heard from God exactly how it's going to go on, but I have an idea of what must change. I have an idea of how things has to move to another place. Church is going to become exciting. Church is going to become fulfilling. Church is going to be life-changing because God is moving us on to another place. Whatever your need is, God is positioning Frontline to meet that need. Whatever your hunger is, God is positioning Frontline to meet that hunger. Call out to God right now for what you want because God's going to put it in place. God is going to do something that is going to reach it. Let's read the first area that I want to address is worship. Not the worship team. The area of worship in front line. Let's read in 2 Samuel 6 from verse 1. And I'm leaving from, leaving from the Living Translation. Then David again gathered all the elite troops in Israel, 30,000 in all. And he led them to Bala of Judah to bring back the ark of God. Now the ark of God represents the presence of God. Frontline, we have to send out our elite troops. We have to send out those that are trained. We've got to send out those that are equipped to go and bring the presence of God back. So leadership, I'm firstly speaking to you. You are the elite troops. You have to make a commitment to saying, I'm going to bring the presence of God back into the center of front line. I'm going to push for it more than ever because I've been called and I've been anointed and I've been positioned for it. There's people sitting right in our pews week after week after week that should be leading already, that should be taking up a place. And I see them waiting for something to happen, for somebody to come and make them a leader, for somebody to acknowledge them. 
instead of just taking up the cross and doing it, instead of just focusing on God and saying what needs to be done, I'd rather manage a wild horse. There's a couple of them in the church as well. When I try and take the church in one direction, they go in another direction, but that's okay. I'll rather manage a wild horse than try and get a dead donkey to move. It's time that you wake up, frontline. It's time that you realize that you are an elite troop and that you are called to bring the presence of God back. So they went to fetch the ark and they, in verse 3, they placed the ark of God on a new cart. You can't bring the ark of the presence of God on an old cart. We've heard about the new wine schemes for years in Frontline. We can't keep on doing what we're doing and expect the results to change. We have to change. We have to change the process. We have to change the heart of Frontline yes. and the new court yes. and brought it from Abinabab's house, which was on a hill. And um, they were guiding the court. And then David and all the people of Israel were celebrating before the Lord, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments. Oh, see that stage filled with singers and musicians. I'm tired of having to trust God for another person to play the drums or another person to play the organ or another person to play the electric guitar or another person to play the bass guitar. I see that stage filled with musicians, people that not only have the talent, but have the heart of worship. David and all the people of Israel were celebrating our worship is not a celebration. Our worship is a dragged out thing. That, and I'm not talking about the worship team. I'm talking about the church saying that our worship has to change. I don't see people that are hungry for worship. I see people that are hungry saying, entertain me if you can. I see people sitting in the pew, standing there, watching it all happen instead of making it happen. Come church, let's get to the place where we are singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nikon, the threshing floor speaks about a time when God starts sifting, when God starts challenging, when God says you can't stay the same. Yes, Lord. And Uzzah reached out his hand and steadied the ark of God. And the Lord's anger was aroused against Uzzah and God struck him dead because of this. So Uzzah died right there beside the ark of God. We need to have such respect for the presence of God that we realize if we enter into the presence of God with a wrong attitude in our heart, we can die. We treat God and our worship with such familiarity that there's such contempt towards God because we're treating him with familiarity. We cannot think we're going to have the presence of God while we are not in awe, while we're not in reverence. Today I'm calling Frontline to Repentance, myself included, yes. and saying, church, we need to hear God. We need to understand that we have to bring the presence of God in. And it is an important job. It is a risky job. It might step on some toes. It might get people if, um, upset. But we need the presence of God. Yes. And David was angry because the Lord's anger had burst out into against Uzzah. David was now afraid of the Lord and he asked, how can I ever bring the ark of the Lord back into my care? Sure. Jesus. So many people have left frontline every time that we pushed for a new anointing, that I came to that place. How can I ever bring the presence of God back without stepping on toes? How can I ever bring the presence of God back without somebody leaving, without somebody stepping down? without somebody letting go of the calling of God. So David decided not to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David. I'm guilty because I was more nervous of another person leaving than I, what I was nervous of not having the presence of God. And God said it cannot stay like that. So he took it to the house of Obed-Edom the ark of the Lord remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his entire household. And I'm seeing churches around Frontline getting blessed. I see churches buying their own property. I see churches multiplying in process. In Frontline, we have quite a few ex-U-turners. And we know that another, I met the pastor who is now in the building that used to belong to U-turn. And I hear they've bought the building and they've paid it off. In the time since U-Turner's closed, um, 
we've been much longer existent like that and we still don't have our own land. Why? Because we're not pushing in for it. Yes. Because we're not saying, God, we want the presence of God at whatever cost. Yes. We've become a people pleasing and yes. being careful not to upset anybody. Well, I'm not doing that anymore. The ark of the Lord remained in obed Edom's house for three months. And the Lord blessed obed Edom and his entire household. So we have to make a choice, frontline. We've either got to go to obed Edom's house or we've got to bring the presence here. But I want to be where the presence of God is. I want to be where God is moving. I want to be where people are seeing miracles. I want to be where the presence of God is so tangible. On Thursday night, as I was walking up the steps to the church, the power of God hit me on the steps outside. Not because the worship team was doing well, but because the whole church was worshiping. Not because people were singing nice songs. The sound was worse than ours. The things weren't perfect. The overheads broke. But the anointing of God was there and we are so focused on processes and things and stuff instead of focusing on the presence of God. I'm asking frontline leadership, worship team and members, can we pursue the presence of God as our number one priority? Can we declare that the ark of God, the presence of God, it might even be risky and we might even lose more members. But can we please make the presence of God our number one priority? Then King David was told, the Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God, because of the presence of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. You cannot have the presence of God while you're sitting in your comfortable chair without getting up and celebrating. After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps. Just six steps. David sacrificed a bull and a calf. It's every single step of pursuing the presence of God will cost you a sacrifice. If you want worship that is easy and that makes you feel nice and that gives you a throne to operate from, it's not going to happen. I'm looking for a church that says, hey, guys. Let's worship. Let's sacrifice. Your worship is going to cost you. Your worship is not always going to be comfortable. Verse 14, and David danced before the Lord with all of his might, wearing a priestly garment. Oh man, there's some, and that's me, is that because of who I am, this big apostle, I can't jump up and down, I can't scream and shout. Because I'm Afrikaans and I grew up in a quiet church, I cannot move with what God is. But I'm choosing to lay all of that down. And I can't really jump up and down now because I'll bump over the camera. But I'm going to tell you that I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to get undignified. I'm going to jump and move forward. And I'm asking who's coming with me? Who's willing to lay down every single tradition that you grew up with? And saying, I'm going to worship God. And David danced before the Lord with all of his might, wearing his priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. When last have you shouted in church? Come on. When last have you even right now there where you are in your lounge shouted Jesus with all you have? Jesus. Oh, you see, so we have to understand that David took his elite troops and he took a new cart. And he did it with celebration. He did it with singing and dancing and instruments. We've got to understand that it brings danger. The presence of God isn't something cheap. It's not your buddy. It's not your friend. It is something that you have to respect. There was a wonder that David said, how can I ever bring the presence of God back? And we have to, as a church, wonder, how do we get the presence of God back? I hear the video is back on. So... We have to know, then it has to be done through a celebration. It has to be done through offering and sacrifice. Church, our giving has stayed on the same level for the last two years. That means that we have not increased in number, nor have those of us that are here increased in the amounts that we can give. 
So I come against stagnation right now. We had the word a while ago that stagnation means lukewarmness. So I want to trust God for acceleration in the finances of Frontline. There's no way we can buy a building on the current fun, um, financial situation. We can just sustain. I'm not here to sustain. I'm not here, nor am I called, nor are you called to be in sustained mode. You've got to now, right now, move in faith and deep inside of your heart. You know what you have been giving up to now. Can you believe God for acceleration? The faith, this was said so nicely by Dr. Tish and Pastor Jack over the weekend. Your faith can pull into the now that which is in the future. Listen to me nicely. So the future Hannes might earn more than the Hannes that is here today. The future Hannes' business is bigger than the Hannes' business right now. And I can name anybody else's name, but I don't want to get people upset because I don't mention their name. But right now, whoever you are, if you say, well, my business is going to take six months before it makes money. It's going to take two years before it makes money. It's going to take five years before it's in a place of truly making money. Let's use our faith and pull that into the now. Lord God, I pull every single person here's position one year, two years, five years from now. I pull it through acceleration into the now. And I say, God, Frontline's finances will change because the situation of the members of Frontline changes today. Oh, Shendara Nakashatatakatoronongo. He danced with all of his might, undignified, not worried about position. Church, many people tell me, why am I not on the worship team? It's purely not because you don't have the right voice or the right thing. It's because I'm not seeing you worship when you're not on stage. Yes, amen. I want to see you first. Don't wait for the stage before you start worshiping. Yes. Let's push into worship. God will bring the promotion in the time is right. When I see a church that is hungry for worship, when I see a church that will give their all, that doesn't care, that will shut out the more undignified I am. I know that I look undignified when I dance around and I'm out of rhythm and I'm out of place and all that. But you're going to see more of that because I'm going to stop worrying about what you think. I'm only going to worry about what God thinks. And I hope many are going to join me. Oh, stop sitting in church and wondering, what if I do this? What if I do that? Just get into God and saying, God, what do you want me to do? If God says lie on the floor, then you lie on the floor. If God says stand on your hands, then you stand on your hands. If God says jump on the chair, then you jump on the chair. Come on. Yeah, but what if the chair breaks? What if the chair breaks? What if? We've got a couple of spare ones. God wants to touch you wherever you are. You're sitting in your home now and he wants to bring something out new. People might look at us with contempt as we push in. But we have to create a sound of front line. And that sound has to be a loud sound. We cannot have a light if we don't have a sound. We have to have a loud sound. I don't care anymore if I hurt the neighbors and they close the church down. God will give us a new building. I have to pursue the sound that God has for Frontline. I have to pursue what God has for Frontline with all I have. And I'm saying, who will pursue it with me? Who will stand in church or in your lounge right now and shout, Jesus! Jesus! With all you have. You might offend somebody in your area. Somebody in your very lounge might say you're crazy. I don't care anymore because God is busy working. Then there was a place of immediate sacrifice. When the presence of God comes, there's an immediate sacrifice. It it cannot be separated. Then there came a blessing. David prayed for everyone a blessing. And then he physically gave them a blessing. As pastors, as leaders, as a church, our job is not only to pray for people. Our job is to step in and truly help people. But for that, we have to come out of this place. Oh, Sheandara Nakashatru. So, Psalm, I would like to encourage you to read from Psalm 145 to Psalm 150 this week. Six days, six psalms. I would really like to see you watching it more than once. I'll just wait for a few more people to log on. And change from the previous feed to this one. 
Um, God wants to move. God wants to speak to His people. God wants to teach us how to worship. We were going to do some more worship at the end of the day, but that's going to be difficult at this time. But uh, come and join uh, Psalm 145. I lift you high in praise, my God, O King, and I bless your name into eternity. That is what God needs. God needs us to be praising. I bless you every day and keep it up now from eternity. The problem is that we only worship when we're in church. We only worship when we are there. And it's evident. Frontline, it's evident that we are not a worshiping church that worships because it's our heart. We worship because it's what we're supposed to do in mm. church. Mm. I want a heart change. I want us to worship day and night because we're so in love with Jesus. God is magnificent. Verse 3. He can never be praised enough. There are no boundaries to His greatness. Come on. We can never do enough to say, God, you are great and good. Church, so as we prepare for next week, Sunday, as we prepare for specifically Sunday night, I want you to develop a heart of worship this week. And the only way that's going to happen is if you get the word into your heart from Psalm 145 to Psalm 150. Generation after generation stands in awe of your work. Each one tells stories of your mighty acts. We've got to tell stories of the mighty acts of Jesus. We have to tell stories of things that God has done. Your beauty and splendor has everyone talking. I compose songs on your wonders. You see, when you truly get into the presence of God, then music and words and things of praise just comes from your inside. Come on. You say, but I'm not made up like that. Well, I'm not either. Mm. It is a choice. Come on. It is a choice. I come from the most conservative kind of Afrikaans church that you can imagine. But ons die dopperskerk genoem het. Ok? Die gereformeerde, not the NG. The NG was far more radical than us. I come from the quiet, gereformeerde kerk. But you know what? God did something. And now I cannot hold my peace. I can't be quiet. I can go all out. Yes. Your marvelous things, doings are headline news. I could write a book. Full of the details of your greatness. But you shall say, unless I'm not seeing that greatness in my life. You know why you're not seeing it? Because you're not praising. Because you're not focusing on everything he's got. Mm. The fame of your goodness spreads across the country. And your righteousness is on everyone's lips. God is all mercy and grace. Not quick to anger. Is rich in love. Church, I want to ask you to start focusing on these psalms for the next few days. I need to turn Frontline's worship around. Won't you join me by saying, God, turn me around. Amen. God, turn me around. Come Make on. me more of a worshiper than what I've ever been. I will push through these six days. We've often fasted for five or six days. I'm asking you to study the last five psalms, the last six psalms of the books from 145 to 150. And get it in your heart. About praising God. Amen. Creation and creatures applaud you. God, your holy people bless you. Amen. They talk about the glories of your rule. They exclaim over your splendor. Letting the world know of your power for good. The lavish splendor, splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom eternal. You never get voted out of office. Amen. <laughs> God always does what he says. And he's gracious in everything he does. God gives a hand to those who are down on their luck. And he gives a fresh start to those who are ready to quit. Mm. I know many who are watching are ready to quit. Yeah. You've just given your all and you don't know anymore how to do anything more. You don't know how the next step is going to work. You don't have no clue what to do next. So let's read this again, verse 14. God gives a hand to those down on their luck. He gives a fresh start. To those who are ready to quit. Amen. If you are ready to quit, admit it. Say, God, I need a fresh start. Jesus. I need a fresh start. All eyes are on you, expectant. You give them meals on time. Amen. God is going to give you what you need on time. Amen. He's generous to a fault. Your lavish, your favor on all creatures. 
God wants to bless you with favor. God wants to bless you with favor. Pastor Jack had such a good sermon on Thursday night and it's on the net where he says people want to trade in business on the trading floors of life. But they haven't gone to trade on the trading floors of heaven. Yeah. And you trade on the trading floors of heaven in your worship. Come on. Being successful in business isn't because of your skill. It's not because of your yes. training. It's not because of who you are and how hard you are working. I'm all for training and I'm all for hard work. But ultimately, I know it's the favor of God that changes things. Yeah. And the favor of God, we trade on the trading floors of heaven. When we push into worship against all odds and we push into worship, even though it's difficult, even though we don't feel like it, even though we've had a hard day. God's here listening to all who pray. Every, sorry, let's go back to verse 17. Everything God does is right. The trademark on all his works is love. Mm. God is there listening to all who pray for all who pray and mean it. I don't want to just say little prayers that make me sound religious. I want to say prayers that gets the attention of God and changes things. Yes, amen. amen. God sticks by all who love him. I keep on skipping a verse. He does, verse 19, he does what's best for those who fear him. And he hears them call out and save him. Prayer is worship. Prayer is not a grocery list. Come on. Yeah. We need to call out to God with all come we on. have and say, God, come and touch us. Come and save us. God sticks by all who love him. But it's all over for those who don't. Yeah. Sure. And then verse 21. My mouth is filled with God's praise. Let everything living bless Him. Bless His holy name from now to eternity. I want Frontline to be a sound, Amen. not a place. Come on. Yes. I want Frontline, Frontline to be a feeling, not a place. Yeah. I don't want it to be an experience that lasts seven days a week, not an hour and a half on a Sunday morning. Who wants to join me in pursuing that level yes, of the presence amen. of God? Who wants to say, I want to be the sound. I want to be the echo. I want to be the one that wherever I'm going, people are experiencing the presence of God. Because I met with my God first thing every morning in the attitude of praise and worship. In closing, I'm going to read Luke, Luke 3 and verse 15 to 17. And now I'm getting serious because I'm reading from the New King James Bible. All the other ones, I took the Passion and the Message and the Living Bible to make it nice. But can I get serious for a second? Yes, amen. Now as the people were in expectation and all reasoned in their hearts, Luke 3 and verse 15, about John, whether he was the Christ or not. I think people ask the same thing, is Frontline the place where I'm going to meet Jesus or is it not? Sure. Come John on. answered saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Come on. Come on. Church, we need a baptism of fire. Fresh fire. We need to say, God, burn away everything that needs to be burnt away. Everything that's not pleasing to you, Jesus. I don't want it in my life. Come on. I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly clean out the threshing floor and gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. You need fire in your relationships. You need fire in your marriage. You need fire Come in on. your business. Yes. You need fire Come every on. part of you. But if we can't have it in church, how are you going to have it in every other day yeah. of your life? True day. Yeah. Jesus. At church, at least, we are trying to have it. At church, at least, we have a, an excuse. This is our church time. So let's make it real. Mm. Let's set it on fire. Let's change the way we do church mm. so that we can have this fresh fire of Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. You want to walk into the boardroom. 
And God says, don't do a business deal with that one because I'm busy sorting him out. Don't, oh, no, no, this looks attractive. Go for that because my hand is there. You want him, his fire in the raising of your children. You want to be able to speak the right word into that moment when all hell is breaking loose at home and you need the power of God for that moment, but you're not willing to pay the price to get the fire of God that will be able to give you that guidance. Lord Jesus. The fire of God is going to not only change our church service. I'm not trying to change our church service. I'm trying to change our church. And that's me and you. The church yeah. service will change if we change. I wanted us to worship now again, but I think that's not practical now that we've changed over to the cell phone. So I'm only going to ask you that you take time to worship yourself. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, what have you never done in church before? Have you never danced? It's time to dance. Have you never raised your hands? It's time to raise your hands. Have you never screamed at the f at full of boards with all you have out of the depth of your being? Come on. Then it's time that you do that in church. I remember so clearly I grew up so conservatively that shouting in church. Man, we got in trouble if we dropped a needle, a spelt for the fall, then you're in trouble. Um, because there was supposed to be no sound in church. So for me, the first time I could during worship, shout out Jesus. I cried for a few days because it was such a freedom moment. I had to lay down everything that I was brought up with for 20 odd years. I had to forget about all of that and saying, I want to serve my God outside of my culture, outside of my upbringing, outside of everything of who yes, I am. Amen. To stand in church and shout out is such a freedom. But we've got kawaii at the front line. Because we don't want to offend. We don't want to hurt somebody. We don't want to let anybody feel uncomfortable. Maybe it's got to the stage where Jesus feels uncomfortable in front line. Sure. Because we're so worried about making other people comfortable. I'm going to push in to make Jesus comfortable again in our mm. church. Come on. I'm going to use this time of reset, this time of starting over, this time of saying whatever it takes, God. Joshua said, God, if you're not going up with me, I'm not going up. Before he moved into the promised land, he said, God, if you're not going to lead the way, I'm not doing this. Come on, come on, Jesus. I can't do this without God being involved. And I need to first have God on my side before I have anybody else on my side. Mm. I need to first have the anointing and the blessing of the Father. And I'm not even talking about my spiritual Father or my earthly Father. I'm talking about my godly Father. Before I push in for what God has for Frontline. We have files full of words of what God has promised Frontline. Mm. But we've not accessed it because we are scared of offending anybody. Yeah. If the Israelites had to go into the promised land and go knock on the door of the guys who were occupying their land and saying, would you mind if we move in here? Do you feel like sharing with us? They would never, ever have occupied what God has got for them. Mm. It's time that Frontline occupies what God has for us. There's a few people who I'm thinking of right now who's been with Frontline for a long time. And I want to say that it's time for you to truly move into what God has for you. Don't wait. Don't expect. Don't depend. Just push in for what God's got for you. Because God wants to move through you in a way beyond what you can imagine. I want to pray for us now. And um, then I'm going to pray that this week will be a week of fasting. Not of not eating, but of worshipping. Not of laying things down, but of picking things up. But make it a week consecrated to God so that we can have a reset like an old computer that gets switched off and everything that's in its memory gets wiped, gets defragmented and um, formatted and 
whatever needs to get done to get the old ways out so that the new ways can be loaded. You cannot have the old operating system running at the same time as the new one. You have to erase the old one or upgrade the old one. Upgraded Frontline 2.0 is being released this week. It's a new software operating system for us. Come on. And it's going to change how we have church. Yeah. Frontline 2.0. Lord Jesus, we worship you, we honor you, we respect you, Father. Lord, I pray that you will take this word and set us on fire and baptize us in that very fire that John promised. In Jesus' name, amen. You're all I need, Jesus.